In the Holy Scriptures, in Luke chapter 24, verse 30, we find that every week we have a very, very special guest joining us in our communion. It's not that we just take communion by ourselves, but every week the Lord joins us. And here in Luke chapter 24 and verse 30, it says when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and gave thanks. And he broke it and began to give it to them. Their eyes were wide open. And they recognized him. And he disappeared from they, their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? You know, I don't know about you, Metro Heights, Come on. Come on. but I'm excited that we have a God who is with us. Amen, church? No matter where you are today, no matter how you came in, no matter how your week went this past week, I want you to know today that our God is with us. Some of you may be worried about this transition. Some of you may not like change. Some of you may not be ready for something new, but I'm here to tell you today, our God is with us. Well, what kind of minister is John going to be? Come on. Are we going to like John? Well, what kind of minister is Emma going to be? Are they going to just see the bad in us and not the good? I'm here to tell you, it's all good with John and Emma. Yeah. You know why? Because God is with us. So how is it going to go in the new Metro Heights region? Oh, it's going to go phenomenal. Yeah. I want to just say thank you to my spiritual leader, my teacher, my man of God on earth. I'm a man under, under authority. Under the authority of Jesus Christ first. Come on, bro. Come on. But also under the authority of Kip McKean. Come on. Come on. And I want to say, Kip, thank you so much for rescuing me, for being there for me. Uh, you have taught me so much over the years. And it's, it's been an honor to be your disciple, to be a friend, to be a trusted comrade. And before God, I will live up to your trust and faith. I want to also thank Elena, who's just the most incredible woman I've ever met. If you haven't read her book, read Elevate. And uh, thank you, Elena, for being such an inspiration to Emma. Thank you for all your sacrifices, all the ways you've given to her and to me. We appreciate you tremendously. And I want to also say briefly, uh, and I know this isn't a part of communion, but we're going to weave it on in right here. Uh, I want to say to, to Tim, uh, Tim has been such a best friend to me. There's no way I would be up here today if it wasn't for Tim. You know, when we made the transition to come over here, Tim was right there for me. He shared his story, shared his life in some of the most difficult times in my life, and lifted me up to higher ground. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my comrade. Thank you for being my fellow Bible scholar. Uh, as he said, we love to talk about me. Tim is an amazing man of God. I respect him profoundly. And I'm excited to uh, just be in partnership with you and Leanne. But thank you as well, Leanne, an amazing sister. We're so blessed to have Tim and Leanne. <laughs> and I just want to say to my new son in the faith, Preston. Woo! Uh, 
Silas, thank you for wrapping your arms around the region uh, during this time of transition. Joy, thank you so much for the amazing. Everybody, um, we're excited to be here. And uh, you don't have to win our trust. You have it. Come on. You have our trust. You have our respect. You have our love. We're here to lead, but even more than that, we're here to serve. Come on. We're looking forward to getting involved in everybody's life. What, what is the hallmark of John and Emma? Moving God to move the ministry. That, that's who we are. We're, we're all about our relationship with God. You know why God, great things are going to happen here? Because God's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We look forward to see what God will do. If we just allow God, this region will be the most impacting region in all of the Southland of the Los Angeles area. Amen. our heart not burning within us. You know, as we take communion today, I pray as we examine, as we look at what Jesus has done for each one of us, and every one of us have a story. We all have a story, a very specific story, of how the Almighty God has done incredible things in our lives. You know, my incredible wife, Emma, is going to uh, share from her life. Emma is an amazing, amazing woman. We've been married for over 35 years. And, uh, you know, everything about Emma is amazing. And uh, I can't wait to share her with you guys in this region, especially the sisters. Uh, you're going to love Emma Causey. I'm so excited to introduce her to you now. really has built me up. I feel like, uh, uh, I feel built up. I humble myself before the Lord, and I'm so excited about talking about the heart of a disciple when it comes to the cross. And so I want to talk about what it really means uh, for me today, and what it can mean for all of us, what type of heart it takes to go to the cross, to look up at Jesus, and then walk away and worship Jesus. In Psalm 119, the Bible says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And when I think about the cross today, I think about how I might not sin against God. When I think about what Jesus went through for me, my response to that is how I might not sin against God. And so this morning, I want to encourage all of our hearts, hearts of a disciple, to really focus on sisters not sinning against our God. Wow. And then secondly, when you go to the cross, I'm sure the women at the cross, and maybe the brothers at the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, resurrected, they had a song. Right. And one of my favorite songs and going to the cross, and whenever I'm having my quiet time, is entitled, Lord of All. And it says, if life was just a song, I would sing for you. If life was just a path, I would walk for you. Jesus, Jesus, Lord of All. So today, as we take communion, please let us remember, as disciples, our desire is not to sin against our God. I love you so much. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come today before your mighty and amazing throne. Yes, yes. Father, we come before you knowing full well that over the darkened skies, as Jesus hanged upon the cross, you bore all of our sins. Father, thank you so much for going to that cross. Being willing, Father, to take upon yourself the sins of all the world for all times. God, we thank you so much today that as your New Testament and Bible church, that 
We are a redeemed people because of that sacrifice. Help us to appreciate all that you've done. Father, as we take the bread, as we break it personally, let us realize that it symbolizes breaking your body. Let it humble us. Let it move our hearts. Let it make our hearts burn within us to obey you. And as Emma so profoundly said, keep sin out of our lives. Father, let it fill us with gratitude of the new and redeemed life that we have in Christ. Father, as we take upon your blood, let us be remembered that blood poured out of your body. And Father, that that, that blood uh, symbolizes water, which symbolizes baptism that brought the new life that we enjoy today into existence. And Father, I pray that we would rejoice in our new life. That, Father, we would let the world know that we are a redeemed people. Father, we thank you so much for that. Let the blood and the body keep us strong all week. Let it remind us to say no to every temptation that comes into our life until we meet a week again from today. We love you, Father. We thank you for this incredible blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.